Hey guys, Frosty Knives here, and the mini reviews continue with The Green Mile Part 2, The Mouse on the Mile. Um, and The Mouse of the Mi on the Mile is a little bit more backstory about what is going on in Cold Mountain Penitentiary on E-Block. Um, we get to hear about uh, Mr. Jingles, mostly about the mouse, how the mouse came on the mile, seemingly out of nowhere, how they found a mouse one day. Um, they weren't really sure where the mouse had come from, but it seemed to keep coming back, how it seemed to be waiting for something. Uh, we see that when Edward Delacroix finally comes on to the mile, uh, the mouse sort of takes to him, becomes his sort of pet. Um, we get the, the the idea that Edward Delacroix thinks he's adopting this mouse, but really the, the mouse has adopted Delacroix. Um, Delacroix says that uh, the mouse's name is Mr. Jingles, and that Mr. Jingles whispered that in his ear one night, how he taught the mouse tricks, and how the mouse can play with his little spool. And we get to see the relationship uh, between the mouse and Edward Delacroix. We get to see the continuing relationship between Percy and uh, Paul Edgecombe, uh, the animosity growing, how Paul Edgecombe really wants Percy to be gone. He doesn't know why he's there in the first place, because he's mean and he's stupid, he's not good at his job. It just seems that he wants to hurt people, and that's not what they do on E-Block. They don't hurt the prisoners, they try to teach they try to treat them as humanely and respectfully as they can on death row because, I mean, they're literally there to oversee their deaths. Um, and he doesn't like that Percy is there. Um, and then how Percy sort of turns a little bit when, when, when Delacroix rolls around. Uh, at first, he's mean to him and, and really aggressive with him and wants to beat the crap out of him. And then we see that all of a sudden he becomes, he becomes nice to him. And the, we find out that the reason that he becomes nice to him is because Hal Moore, the warden, basically tells him what he sort of conspired with, per, with Paul about, that he's going to allow him to be in charge or up front during Edward Delacroix's execution. And that seems to somehow pacify Percy. So for now, Percy is playing by the rules. Um, we get to find out a little bit more about what's going on with Warden Moore's wife. We find out that uh, she did take her to the hospital and she has, she found out that she has a brain tumor. She has brain cancer. And in 1932, finding out that you have brain cancer is more or less a death sentence. The doctor says that she has until Christmas to live. This is in October, so she has a couple of months to live. Um, it's not, nothing that they can do. Um, they can't operate. It's too far down. It's about the size of a lemon. Um, and he, they basically have informed the warden that your wife is going to die from this. Um, in, in another thing, uh, Paul's UTI comes flaring back. So again, we're we're more on uh, talking about the, the urinary tract infection of Paul's, how it, he thought it was gone, and now it's come back. Um, the only way to treat it back then was to take sulfa drugs, and he doesn't want to do that. He's hoping it'll pass on its own. So we spend a lot of time talking about the sickness that's, that Paul has, the sickness that... Um, ward, the warden's wife has, which will, I'm sure, will eventually come into play a little bit further down down the pike. Um, and then the book also talks about some of the previous executions. It talks about Alan Bitterbuck and one of the the first executions. It talks about how executions work on the Green Mile, how they uh, they. Um, they do run-throughs of executions, how they sort of train and do like these dry runs. Um, I don't know if that's something that actually went on when they were doing executions in the electric chair, if they did run-throughs where they would, you know, go through the motions and have stand-ins and make sure that everything was was working right. But uh, we talk a little bit about that, about how the electrocutions and executions are really going to happen. And then the book ends with the last prisoner on the mile. So the first prisoner to come on the mile was Edward Delacroix. The second prisoner that comes on the mile was John Coffey. And the book ends with the third prisoner who's coming on the mile, which is Wild Bill Wharton. William Wharton. Um, and uh, William Wharton uh, is a wild card. And he's unlike any prisoner, I guess, that they that Paul said that they've ever had. And he basically comes 
to uh, the, to the prison and his first day there, um, as they're escorting him into his cell, he attempts to choke one of the guards with his, with his, uh, restraint chains. And, and that's how the book, that's how this book ends with, um, William Wharton coming on the mile, trying to choke the life out of one of the guards, Dean, and then Paul Edgecombe, uh, coming on to, to sort of save to sort of intervene and that's how the book ends and so all the characters look like they're in place we've got percy we've got um brutal and dean and harry terwilliger the guards and paul edgecombe we've got three prisoners on the mile that are going to be waiting for their executions edward delacroix john coffee and wild bill wharton we've got a little mouse we've got uh, two people that are dealing with illnesses and that's where this book ends so on to the third one.